that shouldn't have given up. Finally time to paint these trucks. Heck yeah. Okay, project hand today is to try and get this Chevy C6500 up and running. So this is one of the three scissor dumps that I just recently bought. The inside is kind of all tore up. I got the doghouse off, the whole dash is tore up, the ignition is all tore up, and I was told that it needs a distributor right there. All right, so I was climbing under this truck here, and there's a, a yellow jacket nest right right there and they're pissed ah see them see them they don't like me so i got a plan for that All right, so the bed on this will scissor up, but it will also dump. And this one has a single set of outriggers right here in the middle. And then the two, this lever will do the dumping or the scissor, and these two do the outriggers, one on each side. But as you can see, somebody has gotten into this dash and kind of just tore it apart, including for whatever reason, pulling every single one of the fuses. So I brought some of those. I brought some tools and a distributor. So my goal is to just put everything back in there and see what we can figure out rather than trying to assume that they told us the right thing. So yeah, here we go. So I brought some fuses and it looks like we are gonna be using this size I got a whole bunch in here. This is full of them. This is full of them. And then there are a couple fuses that are this style. Basically this metal canister style. So it's labeled right on it. You know, 10 parking brake, 25 auxiliary, etc, etc. So that will help me figure out exactly what I need to put where. All right, well, I started by cleaning out all the garbage and making it so I could actually see. I collected all the nuts and bolts, put them all in one place, and then I got all the fuses back in, to the best of my knowledge. The This piece here and this bracket up there are for the key when you turn the key. Got everything plugged back in, but all the electronics are plugged in. I still haven't touched the distributor, so the it's plugged in, but there's no cap on it right now. So I'm gonna just see if we've got power. I popped the hood, and it looks like a bird has made this home for quite a while. We're gonna go ahead and evict them. They don't have any babies, so goodbye. So it's still gonna need a pressure wash once we get this thing running, but this is a 7.4 liter Chevy V8 engine. So it's a 454 and it has an Allison AT545 automatic transmission in it. And so I've kind of gone through, I've seen some fixes like that. There's a couple over there, a couple of these fuses. This 60 here and this 40 here were swapped for some reason. Don't know why. You know, somebody's been in here. These are newer looking relays. Um, I took the cover off of that. And I'm not sure what's up. There is no coolant in the reservoir there for the radiator. And I can't see any in the top, but over here, there's like a little drain, and when I open it, I get green coolant. So, that looks clean. 
It may need to be topped off, but I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. So it definitely looks to me like it's had a new water pump at some point recently because of the flash rusting on that part. The, also the, the front cover here on the actual front of the motor, the, the timing cover looks newer. It doesn't look bad in here at all. And so I'm optimistic that we don't have any major problems. There's plenty of oil in it. And, it's, and the oil is perfectly clean too. And there's plenty of tranny fluid in it. And obviously I know you check this when it's running, but for those of you who don't think about it, you also should check it when it's not running. The reason for that is if you check it when it's not running and you see nothing on the stick, then you better put some in it before you run it, especially if, before you put it under a load. I personally would prefer to have realized that I was completely out of tranny fluid and get something in it. So this is another connector that's just been kind of flopping in here. I can't find what it goes to. I mean, so I'm just gonna tuck it up here, hide it out of the way so that uh, I don't remember there's a problem there. Same with this one. Don't know where that goes or what it goes to, but it'd probably be fine right there. So yeah, somebody's been through this electrical system and even this, this main computer box is loose and not bolted down. So, I mean, that's not a bad thing. Honestly, somebody has gone through the electrical on this thing, fixed some issues. You know, you see a lot of the wires have, the, the, the wire loom has been stripped off. You know, they've taken the dash off to get to these relays. They took the whole bottom off to get to the starting area and that that doghouse is off so they get to the distributor. So let's put power to it and see if anything happens. So the battery is currently dead. So I've got the jump and carry 1224 plugged into 12 volts. All right, so let's plug 12 volts onto there. Already got the ground on. Let's go see if uh, we hear or see any smells or burns or anything frying so far I don't see any fire it's a good thing don't smell any electrical problems yet all right I have not even tried this yet let's see what happens oh 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 yeah I just hit the brake pedal and I'm getting all right let's turn the key Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Man, I didn't think I could ever be excited that the key would actually just turn on. <laughs> but we got dash, Christmas trees, we got a radio. I mean, at least the time. It's wrong, but it's on. Um, definitely have some, the brake booster working. All right, well, let's just crank on it and see if it'll even turn over. Oh, baby. <laughs> yes. All right. It turned over. And it didn't fire yet. But I don't know if this has an accelerator pump or not. I'm going to guess it doesn't because it's... But it'll make me feel better if I do that. We're building oil pressure. And if you look right in there, you'll see the distributor turning. Honestly, I think I'm at the point now where I'm gonna pull that distributor, put the new one in, and see what happens. Um, I have a new one, I think it's right. But the other thing we gotta do, let's get this thing to top dead center and then we can get the distributor at the right spot. All right, here is the actual line, right on this, this, this line here, this cast piece. That is the line that we need to line up the marks on this balancer so that we can get it set to top dead center. 
So I'm gonna put a socket on the inside on the actual crankshaft nut, and I'm gonna turn this until we get it to the right center mark. See that yellow mark? Right in the middle of that is top dead center. So we wanna line that up with this cast line. Like right there. All right, cool. By doing this, what we're really doing is we are ensuring that we can put the new distributor in and it will fire in the proper order and be able to be timed properly with the electronics on the inside of it so that the engine runs the way it was designed to run. All right, so we're gonna remove the distributor here. There's just one electrical plug right there. And there's a nut right here that's uh, holding a, a nut or a bolt holding a little retainer. That came out really easy. Okay, okay there's our distributor. I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a rag down that hole real quick to avoid anything falling in. All right, here's why I said I hope I have the right distributor. Because this distributor has spark plug connections for all eight cylinders and the top of the coil, or top of the distributor. But there's really nothing to connect them to. The only thing I have to connect is this one three plug wire here because the spark plugs go from the coil down to the spark plug itself. So I'm not a genius when it comes to this stuff, but I guess it's installed and we'll give it a try. Okay. So we have power. There's any gas in it. I don't think so. Let's get some gas in it. right here let's see if we have spark I'm not sure if we do I couldn't quite see could you what do you think do we have spark or no all right let's see if this old dog finally wants to fire
Definitely has a tick up here in either one. Hopefully it'll come out of it as it builds pressure. Okay, so I already replaced this fuel pump and I get down here to the shop. I'm gonna plug it into the OBD2 scanner so I can just see if it's got any codes or whatever. And I shut it off, go to turn it back on, nothing. Crank, 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 nothing. So I'm thinking, okay, I went through, this has gotta be an electrical problem, but the real problem was I wasn't getting fuel. And so I pulled the fuel pump out again and here's what I find. This is the new fuel pump. This is a new fuel line, and these are the plastic little uh, clamps they give you. You see these little things that look like, like spider legs? They are just pieces of the actual fuel line that has disintegrated. And so I believe this thing slid down, pinched on the plastic, and then just cracked. Because as you can see, there's a hole. And I don't have a lot of gas in here right now. I have enough that it should run, but right now this crack is letting air get into the line, therefore lowering the pressure that the fuel line has so that it won't actually make it up to the motor. So. I am going to go, I'm going to get a new piece of hose here. I'm going to put some real hose clamps, get rid of these piece of crap plastic things. We're going to pop this back in there. We'll test it. We'll put some power to it before I do that, just to verify the electrics um, are all working on it. Uh, I did get another fuel pump thinking this fuel pump was bad, but now I think it's just this hose had cracked. So, and this is a brand new hose. So, I don't know. I'm going to go try and find something made in America because that shouldn't have given up. I had literally driven it 30 miles. I did a little learning. If you buy typical fuel line like this one, this is a Gates 4219XL, it will say on it, not for fuel injection systems. And so this is an SAE 30R7. And you need to find fuel injection hose specifically made for fuel injection and it's it's rated at a higher psi so this can handle 8.9 bar when this line can only handle 3.4 bar and what that really means is not only does it higher higher pr handle higher pressures for instance it won't blow out like that one did but it's also rated to handle ethanol fuel and so a lot of fuel line today that's being used that you buy at the store is not rated for ethanol fuel. And, and a lot of the fuel we have today has ethanol in it. So that's becoming a, a bigger problem. So think about that when you do that. Having already replaced this, I, I already bought the new kit to put this in. And when I did, I used the fuel line that came with the kit. Well, that wasn't rated for this problem. So I've got the good stuff here. We're gonna put this in. Both these pieces are not rated, so we're not going to use that, but just something to think about.
right, before we go any further, let's plug this in. We're gonna turn the key. We're gonna see if we get fuel right out of this uh, fuel line there. All right, so we want to see it coming out of there, right there. Here we go. Yeah, there it is. Heck yeah, that's the pressure I want to see. Got it in, let's prime it. So it primes for two seconds every time you turn the key, then the fuel pump turns off. So we're gonna prime it a few times. Uh-oh. Fuel line came off. All right, let's try that. All right, here we go. Sweet. All right. Let's back this out of the way. I got somebody needs to get something out of the lot here. No, no, I'm going to back straight up. I can't make that turn. <laughs> all right. Got it all buttoned up. Kind of ready to rock and roll. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. And the only light we got is an ABS light. And I know why. There's a sensor on one of the back axle that is not hooked up. But, all right, down into drive. And this does not have park, so you have to use the parking brake. And we need to run and get gas right off. now we got a backup alarm that doesn't work before so I guess we fixed an additional problem that I didn't know existed well we got the C6500 back to the shop and we got the other Kodiak I believe it's also a C6500 that um, is this one's a 92 and this one here is a 2000 and so this one didn't fight me at all it literally started right up it doesn't have a lot of power compared to the newer 2000 i think the motor might be just tired it also might be out of time i don't exactly know but it is identical in the bed setup so i bought these two trucks mainly to fix up and resell and so the plan is today is to power wash them, get them cleaned, kind of figure out what needs what, fix any leaks, fix any, you know, lighting problems or other issues, figure out what I need to buy. I know there's a couple of cab lights missing on the top of that one. This one has a headlight bezel that's missing here. Do something with the bow tie, whether it means just paint in the inside of it or find a replacement. I want to buff the company name off the doors. I want to paint at least the edges of the beds so that they don't look so rough. The rims, I think we're also going to paint those and just kind of spruce it up, make it look good, make it, you know, work and function properly. And then, you know, put them up for sale and, and move on. Because of the three trucks, these are the two that I'd, I don't want to keep. So let's get right to pressure washing so we can just keep moving and get some of this done.
right now I have it high enough that I could put the safety bars in. So I've got a safety bar on that one, safety bar on that one, which will keep it safe for me to be underneath it pressure washing. So that's why I lifted them. But they each have one set of outriggers on these two trucks. Um, the International uh, actually has two sets. So yeah, so those are pretty dang unique and very awesome trucks. I'm really excited to have them. So let's get to washing. see and this is kind of how the other 6500 was there's just chip and paint on the frames and the under side of the bed which isn't really too bad but I want to make it look nicer so we're gonna clean all this up and give it a good coat of paint so that we can move it on get all this excess hydraulic oil Maybe hit the back of that with some white. Gotta make sure all the lights work. And then there may be, well there definitely is somewhere, a hydraulic leak in this area. It just as gunked and covered up with oil and grease as it is. And I'm gonna spray degreaser all around the motor, the transmission, Especially stuff like this valve body there for the actual controls, the cylinders themselves, so that it'll be easier to pressure wash. So I've got some in this little sprayer here. And we'll just spray it on. I'm using it concentrated. Obviously that costs more money, but it'll soak in really well and do a good job of getting this ready for the washer. Much cleaner. All right, so here's the C6500. I have painted the frame, all of the suspension, in the front here, I did this on the Kodiak as well. And I'm gonna be painting the black, or the, the rim black here. So obviously I've got it taped off. I don't wanna get in on the tire, but I want it to look like that. So that looks a lot nicer. And then obviously I'm gonna paint the 
tank and the battery box. And it's all going to be gloss black like that. And then we're also going to paint the beds and the whole scissor. So, as you can see, the thing about painting this, it would be totally fine not to do it. But my goal with these trucks is to get more money for them. So, I'm doing simple things that are beyond the repair, make it run well and operate per properly. And this is just one of those simple things that you can do to add some value. So I don't know why it is, but if something's beautifully painted, usually it commands a bigger and better price. So that's what we're doing. Got the rim painted. I did the little step box there, the step going into the cab. Got that step and the hydraulic controls. And the entire bed is going to get painted. Very similar to that, but I'm actually gonna mix and spray it out of a paint spray gun with an air compressor rather than rattle cans just because I can get more done quicker and it's cheaper. But some of this, it was just easier to do with rattle cans because of the fact that I could get a rattle can into a tighter spot around some of these tanks and I could use, you know, I used cardboard to kind of block off areas where I didn't want to hit any overspray. So basically have to right there done and all of the front. And I did the entire the entire front suspension and the frame and a lot of the mechanicals just to clean them up a bit, make it look a little nicer. I think we achieved that goal. So heck yeah. Finally time to paint these trucks. At least two of them. So I'm going to use Rust-Oleum Heavy Duty Paint. And we're going to spray it with this gun. So to be able to do that, we have to thin it. But before we get that far, you want to mix it. We're gonna mix this seven parts paint to three parts to three parts acetone. And that should give us a good thin enough mix to spray. I like acetone because number one, it's what they call for, but also it evaporates faster allowing the paint to dry faster and we're not going to use any hardener i thought about it but i decided against it all right now we need to dial the gun in paint gun hook it up to some paint When spraying such a big machine, I always suggest wearing a respirator. Probably should wear one every time. So I'm gonna wear this one.
Voila! All right, just got done washing and buffing and giving this thing a little bit of a shine. I took out the headlight bezels, the grill, and the bow tie, and painted the grill black, gold for the bow tie, and black for the headlight bezels. Those should look sweet. The new grill and bow tie. Heck yeah. So, this truck was missing these two, and so I took two off the other truck because I bought a new set for that truck. So, we're gonna replace these two, and then when we get to the other one, we'll add all new ones. Cold start. Hand on the manifold there. And on the exhaust pipe. Gauges. Temperature totally cold. Okay, brake off, put it in drive. Drives just fine. 
PTO engaged. That light right there shows that it's on. Lift the bed from this lever here. Or you can give it some gas and use this lever here. That's scissor mode. There's the hydraulic PTO driven pump. Pull this. Now we'll dump. There's dump mode. And I'm pretty sure it'll go, I don't know, five or six inches further, but at least shows you what it can do. Sounds great, runs great. It's a great truck. Well, I brought it out to this parking lot to get some good pictures of it. So the old Kodiak is off to greener pastures. Find somebody else that needs to put her to work. Definitely a cool truck. And I know somebody will be excited to have it in their fleet or at their farm or construction company or wherever, but very unique bed. I really enjoy the way these work with the scissor mechanism, then you pull the two pins and then it's a dump truck. You know, it's got some versatility, especially with the outriggers, you know, you can have a little bit more stable stance when you're going straight up or even dumping if you're, if you need be. So, um, yeah, looking awesome. Somebody will be proud to own it. The other Chevy is obviously going to get fixed up and sold. All right, next on the chopping block, we have the C6500. So we're going to do the same paint job on the entire under hoist, whole subframe, whole frame everything just like we did on the Kodiak so that is gonna look awesome when it's done okay so here on this C6500 I wanted to explain a few things about the situation the when I walked up to the truck, as you saw, the whole dash was torn apart and everything. Well, I got to talking to the mechanic and he told me that they had just put this motor in. Brand new, haven't even had any hours on it at all, no, no miles, but they couldn't get it to run. And so I don't know if the motor is rebuilt. I don't know if it's a used motor. I don't know if it is a brand new one. It, it doesn't look brand new. It's very possible that it's either a used one or a rebuilt motor. Either way, you would reuse, you know, the headers, you would reuse valve covers and all of this stuff like that. So it looks used, but when you see like flash rusting on parts like the water pump there and the timing cover down there looks brand new, the belts look brand new. I mean, all the plugs, everything 
that is simple and replaceable has been replaced and is new. Now, obviously we put the electronics all back together and got it to crank over, but it wouldn't fire. And so there were a number of reasons. There were some plugs I found unplugged. When I walked up to this machine, I really didn't know that any fuel injected motors even had distributors. And so there was no cover on the distributor. And then when I went and bought one, it came with that cap there that has spark plug holes on it. And I thought, what the heck? Like where in the world that makes no sense? Cause usually you have a spark plug wire that comes from a coil pack down to your spark plug itself. And that wire doesn't ever go to the distributor on a fuel injected engine. What this motor is doing is it's using that distributor as a cam sensor. So, so the little plug we plug into it all it does is sense where the cam's at so it can tell the computer when to fire. Um, learning experience for me, I'd never messed with a gas engine that was fuel injected and had a distributor. It's kind of like, you know, when someone says, oh, well, a diesel. I had a diesel one time and it had spark plugs. And you look at them and you're like, no, you didn't. Because no diesel has spark plugs. But what they're really seeing is they're seeing the glow plug and they're calling that a spark plug when in reality it looks similar to a spark plug but it's different so that's kind of the situation here there's something here that looks like it should be used differently but it's it's a total different use even though granted it is a distributor um, so I had to figure that out got a new one of those and I think that the distributor that was in it was not proper wasn't working properly so the other thing I found and right in here this goes down to a sensor, wire was chopped and they had repaired it, but the repair had gotten wet and then shorted inside of it. So I had to replace that. I pulled back the, the wiring. This one, they had also repaired, but never sealed them. And so I cut them and replaced them with these solder seals. I love these solder seals because they're a shrink tubing with glue in them and solder. So all three of those, but then what they missed was down here below, right where these are, there was another complete cut right through the wire that goes down to this crank sensor. And so that crank sensor was not operational at all. The oil pressure sensor in there was pegging out and basically not showing pressure. And so it would then throw a light on the dash telling you up oh, no oil pressure and obviously that's a huge red flag and that'll that'll shut most people down real quick and that's what I it shut me down a few times trying to figure that out the big reason I didn't film a lot of this was I had the goal to get them out of there I needed to move the two Chevys and the International as quickly as I could so I filmed the bigger stuff and in the grand scheme these two Chevys are not trucks I'm keeping and so I showed you the higher level of what happened and all the other stuff I kind of just didn't show. I did end up like like these wire looms, I completely recovered all the wires and retaped them. You know, I pulled this one out to show you, but this wire loom goes and covers that wire sensor all the way down in there. And so I'm going to rewrap that, but anywhere that I saw an exposed wire, I covered it just so that in the long run it'll be better off for whoever uh, ends up with this truck. So yeah, that's the first thing. So once I got spark back to the machine, it wouldn't crank, wouldn't crank, wouldn't crank. And I wasn't getting fuel. So again, I walk in and I talked to the mechanic and I asked him, I said, have you ever replaced the fuel pump? And he said, yes, absolutely. We just recently did. So at, in their lot, just as you saw me do it, I pulled this fuel tank out and replaced the fuel pump with a brand new one that I bought. And honestly, the one that was in there looked brand new as well. So I believe it when he tells me that they replaced that fuel pump. But one thing to note when working on machines and buying parts, especially parts made to lower quality overseas and places, is never expect a brand new part is gonna always be good out of the box. There are many times I've bought parts that are bad right out of the box. And so if you just assume, oh, that's a good part, no big deal, we just keep troubleshooting, 
you'll never get past the point at which you had that bad part. And so the fuel pump that they had replaced either sat long enough and just didn't get whatever. I think more likely what happened was the fuel pump was just bad and wasn't sending pressure. So the second I replaced the fuel pump, the thing fired up just as you saw in the video. So worked through those issues, got everything working well. Then the last thing that happened is I kept getting a sensor light that was basically a, a cam sensor light. It was essentially telling me that the motor was out of time. And so I ended up having to take the distributor back out and a friend came over and helped me get it perfectly to top dead center again. And basically I had the distributor out one single tooth. So if it's out even one tooth, it will fire and it'll run. It just run, won't run perfectly well. And so that was the situation I was having. It was running, it seemed to be running fine, but it kept throwing a code, kept throwing a code. And I didn't want to sell something to somebody with a major engine issue such as that. And so once we got that distributor back in time and got that one tooth dropped right down in, the thing ran beautifully and hasn't thrown a single code since. So yeah, it was a massive risk buying this truck. When you walk up to a truck, that is completely torn apart and you're told three heavy truck mechanic shops couldn't get it working, couldn't figure it out, and they're just giving up on it and they want it gone, you really scratch your head and you wonder, well, what's, what's happening here? Why can't they figure it out? I took a risk on it largely because of the bed that it had, because if it had been just a straight truck or a flat bed, I would have walked away. But that's a unique bed, a very unique bed and i knew that if i spent some time and i really dug into it more than likely i could probably figure it out but either way i could take that bet off and i could sell that separately and get the money that i paid for this truck right out of that they didn't want to do that they're not in that business they they use these trucks on a daily basis for what they're designed to do and that's it they don't have the time to mess with them they don't want the downtime that's where i came in so beautifully running uh engine in this beast of a truck transmission that automatic transmission is a monster and it works perfectly so yeah it was a lot of work it was definitely some time invested but once we got it all dialed in you know it's going to be a great truck for somebody at some point so so two big takeaways when it comes to this situation one is never assume that whoever told you something about a machine that you know nothing about never assume what they said is true like just diagnose it on your own through your own way and two never assume brand new parts are going to work right out of the box because there are very 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 many times that i've had them not work and have to go back and get another one it's a pain but with the cost cutting world that we live in that's the situation you just got to deal with at times so either way no worries at all not a huge issue you know, I enjoyed this process, I enjoyed the project, and now I've got a truck that's worth significantly more than I paid for it. And whoever ends up with it is gonna enjoy it and have a good, strong running truck for a long, long time. And so, you know, that was my goal. I wanted to sell it to somebody perfectly operating, perfectly operational, without any issues, and I wanted it to look as good as I could make it, and so, I think I achieved both of those. So yeah, this was a bigger risk than even the International with the cooling issue. This truck was, I mean, like I was told, I'd never get it running and I wouldn't drive it off their lot. But don't tell me that because I got it running and I drove it off their lot. So I'm, I'm glad you're able to come along with me on the journey and kind of see the process on this one. This one was definitely a risk, but you can't have any big rewards without taking risks. So another thing to note is on all three of these trucks, I didn't do a single bit of work to them until after I owned them. After I had the titles in my hand, after the problems they had became my problems rather than theirs. So they were more than happy to let me leave them in the lot where they've been sitting for quite some time until I got it all figured out. It took me a total from beginning of buying one to getting the third one, which is the International, was the third one I got home. It took me about a week, week and a half, 
and the biggest problem was getting the oil cooler for the international and once i got that and got that back on as you saw we got it home but these two trucks they got home before that so so yeah sometimes taking a risk is well worth it and pays off well so don't be afraid of it never know what you could end up with we're going to show a cold start so here's the exhaust manifold as you can see my hand is on it it's totally cold here's the exhaust pipe my hand on the exhaust pipe hand on the muffler As you can see, engine is cold. Fire dried up. Put it in drive. Runs and drives great. All right, there it is in dump mode. It can again, it can probably go another few inches, but if you can't get whatever the heck is on the bed of that to dump at that angle then I think you got other problems so painted everything but the top I didn't paint the top because when you use this as a flatbed or even as a dump truck you don't really want paint getting all over everything so I painted everything that was important literally I painted everything but the top of the bed and the cylinders and so it looks amazing and it absolutely works fantastic so beast of a truck there's the c6500 all finished and ready to go on to its new home got the whole bed painted the whole frame the whole scissor mechanism got the dualies back together. Right now the outriggers are down, obviously, because we have the bed scissored, but turned out looking great. All the lights work. Definitely an awesome, perfectly operational truck. Heck yeah. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the process, getting this old beast back to life, bringing it back from the dead, cleaning it up, making it look good, and getting it ready for a new life out there making money for somebody. So, as always, thank you for joining me here at Salvage Workshop. 
I look forward to seeing you guys on the next project. You guys have a great one.